Avast ye scurvy dogs, and welcome back to Trick Bricks. I'm Jamie, and today we're going to continue our 30th anniversary Pirates retrospective series by taking a look at 6286 Skull's Eye Schooner. This gorgeous ship was released in 1993, contains 912 pieces, 9 minifigures, and retailed for $126.50 in the US. Adjusted for inflation, that's about $225 in 2019. I've got the instructions here, but even better, I have the original box. This thing is huge, so it's a bit difficult to get a good shot of the entire thing, especially when you open the front flap. There are a bunch of pictures here showcasing various features of the ship, all of which we'll see for real in a moment, and there's even a little blurb here to help kickstart your imagination. It's pretty long though, so feel free to pause and give it a read if you so desire. Down here is something we don't see anymore. Windows that would actually allow you to see the parts and pieces of the set before you even left the toy aisle. And the back of the box features a handful of very cool alternate builds, including a shipwreck, a pirate dock, and a completely different take on a ship, ingeniously using one of the sails as a cabin roof. These are all awesome options, each worthy of an official set, and as usual, this classic photography is on point. But let's put this aside and see if I'm up to the task of doing the Skull's Eye Schooner justice. I'm just going to come right out and say it. This is my single, all-time favorite LEGO set. I know there are a lot of folks out there who prefer its predecessor, the Black Seas Barracuda, and I certainly respect and understand that sentiment, but for me, personally, this right here is the ultimate LEGO pirate ship. Beginning up top, we've got a pair of Jolly Roger flags. One big, one small, and there's actually another large one back here on the mizzenmast. This thick string runs the entire length of the ship, nicely framing the whole top section, where, of course, we'll also find the sails. And if I had to single out one thing that puts the skull's eye over the top for me, I'd have to say it's the black and white color scheme here. It just seems more menacing and pirate-like to me, as opposed to the red stripe sails on the Barracuda. We get a total of six here. The jib sail up front, hanging from the string, two foresails, two mainsails, and the mizzen sail. I especially like this large mainsail with its skull and crossbones print, and the fact that it's done in a realistic art style, instead of the cartoony designs we've seen in more recent offerings. They're secured to the masts with the same style of upside-down plate-built yards we've seen on all of the other sailing ships, and everything is stabilized by these rigging pieces. And you may notice these hinge plates here, which are not a part of the original set. On any vintage LEGO ship, you'll probably find that over time the sails will droop under their own weight, looking flat and lethargic. This is one way I've come up with to combat that, and I think it works fairly well. Another commonality shared with the Barracuda is this hoist on the foremast, although this time we actually get a winch up here to make raising and lowering your cargo a breeze. You can either make use of this lift pallet and treasure chest, which contains eight gleaming gold coins, or, as I like to do, just to keep things interesting, you can hang the included shark from the hook to represent a fresh catch for dinner. Moving down to the bow, We've got the figurehead, made up of a blank minifig torso and head, and sporting a printed captain's hat and cutlass. This is one of the few things on this ship I'm not really crazy about. I'd prefer to see this be all one color, so the two options I've come up with are A, to replace the torso with an all black one, which I think looks pretty decent and probably the most realistic, or B, swap out the plain black minifig head with a skull. I really like the way this looks, but I can't decide between the two. Let me know what you think in the comments. Anyway, moving on from there, the bowsprit has some nice simple detailing with these rubber hoses acting as ropes, and we've got some platform here that can be used for posing a few pirates. And I really like how this railing has a musket mounted on each side which can be rotated for more precise aiming, or unclipped altogether and just used as a standard musket. Below the railing is the capstan, making use of a propeller piece that can be turned to raise and lower the anchor. And you even have this little clip and cone on the railing to lock it in place. There's a barrel here for storing treasure, weapons, or foodstuffs, 
and on either side of that, the deck is able to raise up and give us access to the fairly spacious cargo hold. While it can be a bit tricky for adult-sized hands to get in here due to the mast and rigging, the area itself is plenty big enough for a few treasure chests, or you could also use this as a brig and throw some prisoners down here. The main deck is where we'll find the four cannons that make up the bulk of the ship's firepower, and these are built in a pretty cool fashion. Each cannon sits on a turntable element that can easily be slid back and forth between the port and starboard side. The only drawback to this approach is that it requires a bit of customizing if you want to realize the Skull's Eye's full potential of 8 cannons. There's a high railing along each side, just short enough for a minifig to peer over. And of course we can't have a pirate ship without a plank for unlucky enemies to walk. This can be attached anywhere you see fit. Then we have the gun port covers. These are another one of the few things I'm not 100% happy with. The color choice here just seems a bit out of place to me. Changing that is an easy modification via BrickLink, but I haven't decided on a replacement color yet. I have black ones in my collection, but I'm not sure how I feel about them. At any rate, the port covers function exactly like the Barracudas. Up when open, down when closed. Back inside, you can see a bunch of cannonballs are stacked all along here, and there's also four ramrods clipped to the walls. I'm pretty satisfied with this whole interior area just the way it is, but I have put together a little something custom that I really think expands the display and play value here, but I'll show you that in a bit. If we keep moving rearward, we'll find a ladder that'll take us up to the poop deck, as well as a pair of white doors leading to the captain's cabin. We'll take a look in there shortly, but for now, let's scurry up this ladder. Up here we've got the ship's wheel, flanked by a few small torches or lanterns, and this one actually turns the rudder, which I think is a really cool feature. But even cooler is the functioning compass mounted here. Such an awesome element that unfortunately hasn't been included in a set since 2001. Behind the wheel is this small storage container that houses a yellow goblet and a spare pistol, and we'll also find a few more weapons waiting for battle clipped all around the wall, along with two small brick-built cannons sticking out on each side. These two large lanterns look great, and they're my favorite place to perch Popsy the Parrot, hanging out over the stern. And speaking of the stern, it features one of my favorite details of the set, this exclusive panel piece printed with the skull and crossbones, nicely framed by this archway. There's also a window down here, letting some light and fresh air into Captain Redbeard's cabin, and a lot of nice shaping thanks to all these half-arch elements. This pair of hook plates serve a very specific purpose. They're intended to hold the small boat that's included. These flexible rubber hoses are the same as we saw on the lift pallet and bowsprit, and they're really the only thing that differentiates this boat from all of the others we've seen throughout this series, besides not having a flag at the rear. As usual, a pair of oars are thrown in. So now let's take a look inside the cabin. To do so, we simply pull these stops back and swing both sides wide open. And for a bit more light, this plate with the storage container is removable. Unfortunately though, there isn't a whole lot going on in here. The only bit of detail being this blue table. And while you're gonna be limited by the available real estate, I think this cabin could definitely benefit from some customization on your end, especially if it's going to belong to one of the most notorious pirates in the Caribbean. Before I close this up, here's a look at how the steering mechanism works, with this plate build acting as a sort of pendulum that pushes to either side two additional plates attached to the rudder, hidden beneath the floor. I really do like this function, but admittedly, it does take up a small amount of space that could have been used for a larger, more detailed cabin. And as far as the ship goes, that about does it. But what about that custom edition I mentioned earlier? Take a look at this. Without modifying the original build in any way, which is generally how I prefer to customize vintage sets, I've put together an upper deck that covers the entire cannon area, and adds a lot more space for displaying the pirates and their plunders. I also felt that some railing was in order as well, since this new deck is only a few plates below the original wall. This is all something I just kind of threw together quickly with pieces I already had on hand, so I'm sure that some of you mock masters could really take this idea and run with it. 
But even in this very simple, cobbled together, somewhat fragile state, I feel like this improves the ship a great deal, and adds a bit more realism and play value. And when you're ready to access the cannons, this whole deck lifts off easily. It actually just sits on the stacks of cannonballs. Now she's ready to set sail, but first she's gonna need a gang of cutthroats to crew her. And it seems we're in luck, we've got nine of them here. Most have been seen in one configuration or another many times throughout this retrospective, especially these five. They're pretty much the standard LEGO pirates, and were included in just about every pirate set. As you can see, they're all armed and dangerous. Somewhat less common, although not at all uncommon, is this guy with the red and black striped shirt. The face print is very similar to this one, although the hair is red instead of black. We've seen the wench a handful of times before, but she's still an awesome vintage figure to have, and she's also given a cutlass to defend herself with. Captain Redbeard is, as I've said many times before, one of my favorite minifigures, period, pirate or otherwise. His detailing still holds up pretty well to this day in my opinion. And not content with just a cutlass, he's also wielding a flintlock pistol. And last, but certainly not least, one of the rarest pirate minifigs of the vintage era, the first mate, or quartermaster. He features some very nice torso printing with his brown vest, two belts with metallic buckles, and a white ascot. Interestingly, he shares his face print with some of the Imperial officers, so perhaps it wasn't always a pirate's life for him. His rarity, usually selling for about $20 on the secondhand market, is due to the fact that he, or more specifically his torso, was only ever offered in two pretty large and expensive sets. The Skull's Eye Schooner, of course, and the awesome Imperial Trading Post, which we'll definitely be taking a look at in the future. I love having him in the collection since he injects a bit of variety to the otherwise very similar crew. And here he's given a map to help lead them to the buried treasure. Besides the humans, we also get three creatures, the shark and Popsy, both of which we've already seen, as well as Spinoza the monkey, who's right at home scampering around the ship's rigging. As I said, this is my favorite LEGO set of all time, at least as of right now. Even the awesome might of the UCS Millennium Falcon, which barely fits in my current studio, hasn't unseated the skull's eye from its throne, in my mind. Vintage LEGO has always been all about imagination for me, and here there are so many high seas adventures just waiting to be had. So many play scenarios you could act out. And even if you're just into collecting, this beauty is a surefire centerpiece. So how does it stack up to the Black Seas Barracuda? Honestly, you really can't go wrong with either of these amazing sets. On one hand, the Barracuda is notable for being the one that started it all, the Trailblazer, and it remains, deservedly so, at the top of many all-time greatest lists. On the other hand, the Skull's Eye exhibits a new and improved design, new features, and an updated aesthetic that has a bit more menace, something I think Captain Redbeard would approve of. It does this, all while maintaining the classic, timeless charm of its predecessor. So if you're caught between a rock and a hard place trying to decide which of the two you should add to your collection, it really is a win-win situation. The only thing that might sway you away from the Skull's Eye is the price tag. $400 is about the going rate for a used specimen in good condition, and that's about a quarter of what you can expect to pay for a sealed copy, if you're lucky. By comparison, a used Black Seas Barracuda can generally be had for around $200. I consider myself lucky to have found mine on eBay for $225, complete with box and instructions. So if you're patient, you can still find some decent deals. And if you should decide to take the plunge, I can guarantee from experience that this will quickly become a crown jewel in your collection. But that's all I've got for you today. If you enjoyed this review, feel free to leave a like, and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. I'll be back soon with another awesome vintage LEGO set, but until then, this has been Jamie for Trick Breaks. As always, thanks for watching, take care, and play well!